Yo, what's going on, everyone? This is the King and Candy Show. I am your host, King with the most, and this is my co-host, Beautiful Luxury Candy. Candy. Say something, Candy. Hi, guys. Thanks for tuning in today. Yes, yes, yes. We have a wonderful show for you today. If you're just tuning in to us, man, we just want to thank you for all of your contributions that you've most definitely done for us um, for through the YouTube, through the Google Podcast, through the iHeartRadio, through Amazon Music, through the Facebook post, through the Twitter, wherever you see us. We just want to thank you. For our LinkedIn, check us all out at all of these platforms. We are most definitely there. If you enjoy our content from this point forward, please continue to keep downloading. The download button is right there to the right. It has an arrow usually pointing down. Just go ahead and push that most definitely. Also, just share it. Share, like, subscribe to us. We want as much subscribers as we possibly can. And we really want you to share this. Send this send this um, show to your text messages, to your friends, to your family members. Let them know, like, hey, these dudes is pretty cool. You know what I mean? Shots out. <laughs> Hopefully you know. But if you don't, it's okay. Also, if you want to show us some love, consider supporting our channel by going to Cash App and donating to King Candy Show. The link to the Cash App, our email address, and even our website will be located down below in the description. Thank you. Thank you very much. And shout out to Bus Sprout. You're getting out the word. We're getting out the word. We're getting out the word. So stay tuned because we are about to blow the number one podcast in the world. And we claim it because that's ours. That's right. So, Candy, what is today's show about? Can you please just fill them in? The cow says man. What? The- <laughs> that was not me singing. Um, Elon Musk buying Twitter. Will he? Won't he? What's going on? That's what we're talking about today. Oh, shoot. I think he's going to change the world. <laughs> Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. <laughs> That's right. And so Elon Musk most definitely is trying to change the world. I don't know if he's trying to change the world to put more money in this pocket or is he trying to change the world to go to Mars? <laughs> but either way, we're all going to get rich and we're all going to be riding around in these electrical vehicles that should be charging themselves. <laughs> Oh, my God. Why do you go to a Tesla charging station and you pay more for charging than you do actually gas? Oh, oh, good point. That's something they'll tell you about before you freaking plug up, dear. <laughs> but my, I digress. I digress. Damn. That's right, homie. That's right. <laughs> We want to get this popping and percolating to the current events that's most definitely going on. Can you, can you, can you, um, hit some of these people off some current events? I, I, I don't know. What do you think, Candy? Let's yeah, get it. Absolutely. I would love to. No, Dizzy. Um, for those of you who are big country music fans, Loretta Lynn transpired today at the age of 90. Aww. Lived a good long life. Now. 90. Not about Aww. Right. Yeah. Hey, prayers and uh, flight to her family that are most definitely out there. She was a huge, huge star, um, a huge country star. For those that like country music, we most definitely would play some country music for you, but we don't have authorization. So right. we still love the country stars because country music comes from, you know, just down home blues. Right. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So. 
The world's best bars hidden behind a pastrami shop in New York or in London. What the freaking what? freak? It's so obscure. It's hidden behind? Yeah, it's store? called London Tailors in elementary. Oh. Came in seconds while slips of Burkani and spots the sword. 34 spots landed Third. Oh my God, oh, what yeah. did I just say? I don't need this trauma or drink, so <laughs> on to the next. Oh my God, let's go. Um, did you know that allegedly, according to reports, Angelina and Brad, part of why they broke up was because of alleged abuse, that Brad was abusive. I have never heard that before until recently. The police, they are after me. All right, oh. correct, absolutely correct. We're coming to get Brad Pitt, oh, we're coming to get you. It's so weird because I've never heard that in all these years, and then recently, like in the last month or two, I've heard about this twice. So anyway, there's a lawsuit going on where Brad is suing Angelina for saying that or confirming that. And now Angelina actually is- Allegedly. Doing, uh, well, yeah. I mean, she actually did file a countersuit against Brad Pitt, and she detailed the allegations of abuse in the countersuit. Oh, my God. She's like, God. you're not going to sue me after I told everybody what you did. Allegedly. Two hours later. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> The latest thing the Americans are divided on are interest rates hikes. Are you freaking serious? Why would you be divided about that? Don't we not want high interest? From Bloomberg, this post comes from them. Half of the country wants to tame inflation quickly. I mean, click, like slap it all up, pal. Slap right. inflation like yesterday. up. yesterday. Yeah. Even if it means recession, according to the exclusive study from Harris Paul. Oh, shoot. Harris is getting in there. The other <laughs> half would probably avoid the recession regardless of inflation ticker gets higher. So what do you think, man? Do you think... What do you think, Candy? Do you think uh, that these inflation hikes and do you think they should end it quickly to try to, you know, get back to normal? I see my man, pal. He he looks stressed out. He looks like he got in there looking like he was 30 years old. Now he's looking like 95. Yeah. I think it's so complicated. He's stressing, boy. It's so complicated. I think everyone would love for, you know, inflation to go back down to normal like yesterday, but... I don't know what the long-term implications of that would be because there are so many factors that went into causing this historic inflation and the stock market crashing. And I mean, it almost feels like a quick fix sounds great, but like a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, what is that? What's that what look like? What are the implications like? Yeah, yeah. Bruh. I don't Bruh. know what's worse, living with it now or messing it up for later. I know, dude. It's so freaking ridiculous. Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates this year. The policy reached in hikes by 75 basis points for another third straight time. Are we freaking serious? So, so, uh, so the economy seems to be fighting between inflation or a recession. Right. Great. To me, that just sounds like bubble, get ready, hold right. your drawers on, get your food ready. <laughs> yeah, it's like a rock and a hard place. Hey, Which one would you rather land that's on? That's what I say. Go, all the preppers that you were saying was stupid, right. stupid. Right. Yeah. You better go get you a bunker because right. it's going down, homie. Right. Be really nice to that person next door that has like an underground basement full of canned beans. Right, 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 right. right, right. Um, okay, so there are now articles out about the world population. You know, for so many years we've heard, oh, it's overpopulated, it's overpopulated, there's too many people on the planet. Well, I guess that marketing did a really good job because there's talks now about the world population collapsing due to not enough people. Interestingly enough, like Elon Musk actually mentioned that a few months ago in an interview he was doing. Um, and then, you know, everyone was kind of looking at him sideways like, what do you mean? Like, there's too many people, right? And he was like, no, that was from a long time ago. That's no longer accurate. But that's the last thing people remember. And they're just going with it. It's caused a lot of people to not want to have children or to limit the amount, self-imposed -impose, limitations on the amount of kids they want to have. Because they're so concerned about overpopulation. Well, now it looks like there are some people worried about population collapse. So now what do we do? I think, Candy, what we do is just hold on our lollipop and get ready for the bango songs. <laughs> <laughs> what the I think, I, I, think, I think, like, dude, I've been on these dating sites for the last couple of months. And I would like to most definitely raise my hand and say that... There is a such thing as population collapse. 
you have no idea the unrealistic uh, viewpoints that professional women professional i mean these these women are well educated well established in their careers how unrealistic their viewpoints are on in relationship and expectation and this is not a this is not a slight against women but it's a slight it's it most definitely is a a um a sword thrown at social expectation for people there is no such thing as knight in shining armor it just don't exist homie yeah. like you're not gonna like the the majority and then all the the realistic the, the the ladies that want these relationships with these dudes they literally want six feet tall chisel face knight in shining right. armor kind yeah. of thing and like literally only thing that you really can get really can get after you created your financial value so well is beauty and the beast <laughs> So you got men are the most aggressive looking faces on the planet. You're not going to get the Brad Pitt, baby. You not. Cuz even they had and surgery. And then and then men are not necessarily well educated in the western hemisphere. And the ones that are not think about you, they think about making some money. Money. They not thinking they in their career, they or they trying to move move people out of their spot so they can get to they to the other spot. And the ones that are in their career, they not think about you. They just think about flirting. <laughs> so the reality of it is, population caps does happen and it does. You better watch out. Yeah. Because Amazon is freezing corporate corporate hiring in retail business with slowing sales. <laughs> I really thought Amazon was like I thought Amazon was going to be like the United States of Amazon, like for real. For I real. mean, in California, they utilize the post office on Saturdays and Sundays to deliver their stuff. So that's I mean, crazy. They're playing with the Fed, but I mean, I don't know. Everything goes up and down. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't even know what to say about that. To tell you the truth, I mean, uh, free like Amazon having a problem. Amazon. Like just like how the banks got free, uh, got um, jumped out. Amazon should most definitely get get um, bailed out. Bailed out. Yeah. Because they they mean so. You know how many you know how many kids, how many grown adults that work at Amazon. Yeah. N- coming from a reality where they can't pay for anything, like they literally need support, like to support themselves, and how many jobs. That Amazon is most definitely given, like the government, like Powell should be having um, a Bezos there at the at the meetings. He probably is. Like He's such Be- a huge contributor to the economy, he probably is at those meetings. Bezos need to be at them meetings. Him and his um, ex wife. <laughs> so that's all I can say. Yeah. The current events went well today, Candy. Can we give him applause for him? Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. So, so, um, Candy is uh, as we as we gear up for as we gear up for this time in the world where you know men and women are seem to be having some kind of issue or problem um, with one another, and you know the battle of the sexes, so to say. Where do you think that? This time is unique. Is this a biblical time? Should people be looking out for like two stars in the sky? Like, <laughs> what should they be looking out for? Do you think? Uh, I think they should be looking out for themselves and their family. That's what I think. Okay, okay. I don't know if it's a biblical time. I don't know if it's the end of the world. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But I think that if you spend each day doing your best to care for yourself and your loved ones, then all you can do is go to bed each night feel, knowing that you did your level best. And, I mean, nobody knows what tomorrow is going to bring. So that's my only advice. <laughs> is that how I sound to you? <laughs> this is where it's so sad. <laughs> we go into the time, the donkey, the muskrat of today. <laughs> this is the time where we take the human eye to a place where it's never been before. 
This is better than the Twilight Zone. We are taking you down a journey that you will never come. Where humans take themselves to a place to where you've never gone because you just don't think to go. I didn't know it existed. Didn't know it existed. But it does. It does, Candy. We are on the third dimension hopping off of the floor of a monkey on the back of a horse. Oh, my God. And when we don't realize that we are just humans, just spit. We are human spit coming from our mother and our father in a passionate, romantic night of passion. <laughs> God, welcome to the dumb stuff. Um, everybody who has been through here throughout history is now incarnated here. And um, we're all here for the final battle now, on Earth, on Heart. We, everybody who's ever been here before is back now. Mm -hmm. And there is no time to, to, to fence sit anymore. You choose a side uh, or, or you, you sort of die. You choose this side or you choose the dark or you choose the light. That's that. And the battle against? Taking over the heart. If the heart is taking over, taken over, human beings are then locked down for another 50,000 years and we have to do another 50,000 years of lifetime cycles. The, the war on Mars, thousands of years ago. Yeah. It's the same war that's going on now. And it's, um, it's like between reptilians yeah. and mammals. Yeah, yeah. And never ending, you know, because they are they are totally opposing genetically. That you couldn't get more diametrically opposed beings. They are completely opposite. And to make things worse, the um, this 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 body that we have now um, was deemed to be the most efficient uh, body to function on surface Earth. But what they did is they they for the majority, 99%, is they gave us only two-stream two DNA. Mm -hmm. NANI? Get ready! Wow, that's a very interesting interview. This man has taken too many slaps. He and he doesn't understand. <laughs> put, put the shroom down now, mother... <laughs> You, 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 you ate up everybody's room! I don't even smoke, don't even want to smoke no more if I smoke! Oh my god, think about I gotta drink! I gotta take a drink after listening, I don't even drink! Welcome to the Words of Wisdom, everyone. Get ready, Words of Wisdom. Here we go. Now the billionaires rule the world. And I call them the 1%, not because they're 1%, they're just a handful. And when you ask me, you know, what's the optimism? For me, the optimism is a pathetic group of ignorant, selfish men are not more powerful than all the people who've occupied. People have power. We've been made to think we are inert. We've been made to think nature is inert. In and all it is, is a colonization of our mind. The minute we become free and say, we are part of nature, we are creative, and we are powerful. Powerful in a different way. Powerful in the way of Shakti. Powerful in the way of, of non-violent resistance, of absolutely refusing to be colonized. Yes, so I understand. So we have to... <laughs> <laughs> so he built a tunnel under the city, and then he started selling hats for his tunnel. 50,000 hats later, he got bored with hats and switched the hats out for flamethrowers. He sold 20,000 of those, and then five days... Right, I understand. I cannot wait until the time when all of the oppressors and people that go against those oppressions, they meet in the fabric of the universe and they have their last battle right in front of their mothers. <laughs> Think about it, Candy. Oh Think if all of the oppressors, right, whoever their faces may be, they're the most gangsters entities on the planet. They're no name, no face, right? And then the people that are getting oppressed start to rebel. Mm -hmm. 
and they get wiped out by the oppressors, right? Okay. They get banged out, shot out, whatever, Candy. And then they show up. They wait there for the fabric of time to exist. And their souls does not cross over. They just wait in the middle passage, waiting for those people that while they were on the earth, and they're probably still on the earth and living to a long old age, they wait for them to leave and trans the, the oppressors to leave and transpire out of their bodies. And then they meet them at the cusp of reality when the Most High takes the oppressors off the earth and then puts the oppressed in their place and then they have this final like Thor battle. <laughs> what happens when you battle an oppressor or you battle your, your oppressed people? What happens? Is it just emptiness that happens because it's always like a Batman Robin thing in this whole reality that we live in. It's like there's no difference between what's going on on Batman and Robin versus what's going on in nature. Mm. So I think people got to take time to think about that. And yeah. if you can, just stay woke. Cause it's we're a about lot to, to take in. It is. It is. Freaking <laughs> is. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, my God. That's what she said. Here we go again. Oh my god, it's a black hole! <laughs> Welcome to the dumb stuff. Here we go. Here we go. Now, if you hear about the Illuminati, if you watch the movie Eyes Wide Shut, you hear about something called the Saturn Cult and the Festival of Saturnalia. Why? Because these people trace themselves back to the progenitors who had originally settled on Saturn. Trump. So if you look in Eyes Wide Shut when they're all wearing the masks, they do this dance where they go around in a circle, and that emulates the rings of Saturn orbiting. Because they trace themselves as the descendants of Saturn, and they believe that they're different from the rest of us, that they have extraterrestrial DNA that made them the gods. And that kind of is segueing into the next part of our talk. So there were a very small number of survivors when the moon was blown up and they got out with only, apparently the story is, the moon was so badly hit that only a few of their damaged spacecraft got out and their civilization on Earth was almost completely wiped out. So just a small number of them made it and they crash landed on Earth. Google it! Google it! Google it! You gotta, you gotta, you gotta Google it! He, he ain't telling you no lies. You got to Google it, boy. Yeah. You better know what's going on. They crash landing on Earth, and they came here just to take a poo-poo. To, to poo. -poo. <laughs> <laughs> ah, welcome to the dumb stuff. Whatever reality is, it's not what you see. What you see is, is just an adaptive fiction. Wow. Oh. Yeah, that's not the first time that I've heard um, people say this is like a simulation or a, an, an adaptation of a mirror reality or an, a shadow reality, and we're just like video game characters playing out our scenes. It's kind of crazy. It is, but stay woke. Welcome to the dumb stuff. Cosmology, consciousness, brain, mind, the nature of meaning, is there a God? with some of the top thinkers in the world. But if, if I step back from that, there's a deeper question in terms of how do I know what I know? What is knowledge? What is a belief in something? You're talking about epistemology as the theory of knowledge. I think it should be construed as the theory of knowledge and justification. Hmm. Usually what you know, you're justified in believing, but there are exceptions. In my view, philosophy should, when possible, defend common sense. So I think I know a lot about my surroundings right now, perceptually. Mm -hmm. Seems to me I also remember how I got here, and I hope I remember times way before that. I think I know something about the future. Immediately, I'm going to raise a hand to give an illustration, but even the distant future. So how do we know? Well, knowledge is belief connected with the fact known in the right way. So when you see a hand, 
the hand affects you, and if it does it in the right way, you know there's a hand before you. But it could do it in the wrong way. It could just activate a machine which causes you to hallucinate a hand just like it when there's actually a lead shield between you and me. Mm. So we have to know how the world affects us to understand mm. whether we know. I'm taking knowledge to... See, that's exactly what I was talking about. Do we really see what we're seeing? Is this just like a shadow world or a hallucination or is this reality? Like, what's reality? But the, the, I think the point that he was um, pushing on is connection. You mm -hmm. have to be connected in order to even decipher what's going on. And like, if you're not, if you're not connected, uh, your lens is blurred. You don't have the right thought. You don't have the right to support your knowledge. Your what you say is your knowledge base. So, so you got to be connected in some way. And like, it's the same thing I was talking about the two percent or the one and a half percent that rule. It's kind of like, are they really connected? You know, are they connected to the ninety eight percent? Like, it's like. <laughs> It's like, how far do you got to go away to where it really seems like you don't like ruling and you don't like humans? So go be somewhere else and let humans rule. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you got enough money to do it. You know if you know what's on the other side of Antarctica. You know what's on the other side of all this. So, and, and your children don't really like the reality because they're ungrateful and they you can't remove their ungratefulness because... They got everything they want. Mm. <laughs> so, so let's get it back to the let's get it back to the to the main situation and situations. Uh -huh. Castaways. Come on, Candy. Oh, suits. I love that song. I never heard that song before we started doing this podcast. I know, man. But tell us about Elon. Okay, so. Nice. Elon Musk is now reviving the deal Hello, to buy how are you? Twitter I am under at the original price that he initially agreed upon before this big fallout happened. And as a result, Twitter shares surged by 22%, just based off of the fact that he said he's going to potentially buy it again at the initial agreed upon price. So at first, Elon Musk made... Uh, put an, a potential deal with Twitter to buy them for an agreed upon price and he went back on that and it halted because there are all these issues and all of this quality control issues that he felt Twitter had and he said unless you guys are able to fix it I'm not moving forward with buying anything that was a big problem there was a lawsuit all of this happened but now it seems that he is going to plan to go through with the acquisition at 54.2 Dollar and fifty four dollars and twenty cents a share per share. That's crazy. And the stock jumped twenty two percent after it opened. So that's amazing. I, I know that he kind of did a lot of back and forth, but uh, seems like Twitter's now valued at forty four a billion with a B, and um, looks like he's going to move forward with it. What do you think? Should he buy it or not? There's been a lot of back and forth. Do I think he should buy it? Um, I'm still on the fence. Uh, I'm on the fence because the reality of it is, is that Twitter means so much. The CEO is, is Parga Argorula. Oh, <laughs> bro. I'm sorry. I'm, I messed your name up, dog. Like, can you, can you say his name? Um, uh, Parag Agrawal. Per <laughs> Can you not? <laughs> can you not do this to Sorry. people? These people are gazillionaires, and they and they got our future in their hand. Can you get their name right, please? <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> so I, I I think this is what's going on, and I, and and the more that I that I keep seeing what's going on, it, it just annoys me how like big Jack Dorsey's beard is. <laughs> It like, does look really like bushy and uncapped. And yeah. he has so much money, dude. Go to a barber shop. Nah, but like, listen, man, I'm I'm with the beard game, but 
Dog, your beard is like really long, homie. And I like the gray streak that's going through, cause it, you know, you 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 probably getting chicks like that. <laughs> but yo, Jack, 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 I don't know if you really want to sell it because you've built it up, and then all these like, you know, hot cake uh, uh, government entities are coming for you. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. You know, you you, you had. You had the dumps get after you. You got Elon coming after you now, trying to get your stuff. And I know in the back of your mind, when you build something, when you build a great wall, you don't want to sell it. Yeah, but you're right. There's been so much controversy, and he's been brought before Congress to testify. And there's so much going on as well that maybe it'll be a relief to him to, even though, you know, it's a passion project and... He built it from the ground up, whatever the case may be. Perhaps this is really more like, a, okay, the laws are changing, big tech media rules are changing. Uh, it's no longer a playground. It's a lot more restricted. It's going to be a lot more restricted in the years to come. And perhaps he thinks that's going to change the platform. And maybe it's more of a relief for him to get rid of it and not have to be dragged in front of congressional committees all the time. Right. Yeah. Dude, I don't know what is worse, either Elon having it and taking it to space or Jack Dorsey <laughs> keeping it and making everybody go beardless. <laughs> Selling Twitter to Elon Musk, is it good or bad for investors? And so that's another thing. We got to think about the, the specific investment. I think Elon most definitely has become, he doesn't want to be president, as we can see. But he most definitely wants to be like this meme character. So I think when Elon gets it, as long as Elon can bring value to people, he wants to buy it. And I think Elon, I think that's one of the reasons why he wants to buy it is because all the professional people are on Twitter, government's on Twitter, everybody's on Twitter. And then if Elon gets it, he can bring value just like Robin Hood brought value to the 98%. You know what I'm saying? Right, exactly. So, and then all of the wealthy people, all of the managers, whenever you talk about Robin Hood, oh my God, they are like, it's almost like they, they listen to Robin Hood and they look at Robin Hood, oh, you pay so much for your stocks, oh, you pay, pay so much for your stocks. Oh, oh. I'm like, dude, shut up, man. Like the majority of people that are on Robin Hood now, they never thought about stocks in the first thing. You remember the right. first time that you put your money into the stock market without mm -hmm. without anything? Like, right, without a broker or you know a middleman. Yeah, you know how many times you lost? Because people lose in the stock market. Right, yeah, you know how many times you lost? Let them lose. Shut up. Let them lose. Let, let them lose and then let them gain. How about that? That's the American way, baby. Right. Don't hate. Congratulate. So if Elon can bring somebody value with Twitter, maybe make Twitter like a payment system or something. Yeah. Maybe something. He has a background in PayPal. I don't see why not. Yeah. If he, as long as he can create a value for you. For the populace to to be able to do, I say go ahead and buy it. But if you're just gonna buy it to shelve it or just uh, or just dissolve it, I think that's just a waste of connectivity. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Me too. So, but it's all about money. So keep it moving. <laughs> um. So we want to thank everyone for listening to our show. It was a wonderful show today. What do you think, Candy? Yeah, it was amazing. Yes, 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 yes. So, we want to, if you enjoy our content, please continue to keep downloading, sharing, and subscribing, most definitely. Also, if you want to show us some love, consider supporting our channel by going to a Cash App and donating to King Candy Show. The link to the Cash App, as well as to our email address and our website, will be located below in the description. Yes, yes, yes. You just got finished listening to The True in Living where we focus on peace, peace justice, justice, and, and truth. truth. And if you get anything today, please get the knowledge of self, because the knowledge of who you are will open you up to different horizons, will open your mind up. And also, remember to keep a smile on your face, because the more we smile, the more positive... Uh, you know, smiles, smiling, just looking in yourself and just smiling, you know? 
it stops depression. Clinically yeah. chosen, this, right. you know, just you putting a smile on your face, it does something for the environment. And when you're able to smile, that's going to open it up. So know who you are. Take time out for yourself. Don't be worried about your work and, oh, you got to get this report in and this. Take out time for yourself. Okay? Also, we, we want y'all to know that we have this nonprofit called Get Back to Nature. Okay? And this nonprofit is based off of... of Every individual has has the ability to stop climate change, has the ability to give back to what has given to us. We don't think about so much of how much air that we breathe, right? Until right. you lose 30 seconds of it, right? Right, exactly. We got to do something to give it back. And the best way that we can give back to nature is to plant these trees, we're going to take hundreds of trees and we're going to plant them every single month. And we need your cooperation and participation. <laughs> Getting back to nature is, is basically the grounding point for all of us to sit there and say, what can we do? At least when you come out with us and go all over the world and plant trees, revert deserts, go and do the positive things for humanity, you will most definitely understand the, uh, what it means to give back. Yeah, that's true. So we want y'all to understand that getting back to nature is the thing that we should do because weather here in the United States is getting crazy. Like, it's it's like a second summer. It's uh, the wind. I don't even know how the winter's going to be right now. I hope there's no Arctic brust is going to make winter, like, you know, up until uh, May. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Lord, have mercy. But the seasons are starting to blend together. The moon, you look up in the sky, I see the moon out at 12, 12 p.m. Like, this reality yeah. is going yeah. is going nuts. Shucks. So the one thing that we can do is connect back to nature is to go plant these trees. Go find this water. You know, Jackson, Mississippi, go, through, go do what you can do, and you can do it on the shoulders of us. And if you want to invest in our uh, nonprofit, it won't be an investment. It'll be a donation. Right. If you want to if you want to donate your time, donate your money, donate donate people that know how to cut cut things and plant and do things of that nature. Bring them on, Saudi. <laughs> but I love you and I love all of you today. I want you to have all have a peaceful, productive, and wonderful day, and I hope you all succeed in everything that you're going to do. May all of my words that come out of my mouth hit your ears down to your heart and up to your soul so you can become this wonderful individual that lives on the planet. May you continue to share our products and share everything that we're doing in content wise because we're growing and we want you to grow with us. Come hold our hand. Remember the time that you wished and you heard you saw these people and heard of these people before they became this, this bright star in the North. You remember that? <laughs> Remember you didn't say, oh, man, I should have grabbed the coattail right before they just took off in blue because they became YouTube stars or Facebook stars. <laughs> you were there. You were there when Michael Jackson sang to ABC, ABC, it did it for me. You were there. But you did nothing about it. This time you do something about it, and we most definitely want to see you come out and do the things you need to do. So have a wonderful day, and we're going to have a wonderful one too. And um, let listen to these boys sing, these South African boys. Listen to them sing this beautiful song. And see y'all later, alligator. Y'all know y'all wanted to sing it. The Restoration.
of Ma'at.